Hey everybody, what's going on? In this video, we're gonna be talking about the Ozark Chinkabin chestnut. It's a really hard plant to come by. Um, apparently, it used to be really common in uh, some states in the, the Midwest and the Southeast, um, and it, year by year, it was shown to have a lower and lower, smaller and smaller range um, as um, it became more endangered. But apparently, it's a very, according to the Ozark uh, Chinkapin Foundation, it's a very, very in-demand uh, nut for uh, wildlife. They kind of go crazy for them. He told the story, Steve Bost from the foundation told a story on a podcast um, about how they were trying to propagate the Ozark chinkapin in their greenhouses. And uh, they uh, had all sorts of other chestnuts and oaks, uh, like acorns and other nuts and seeds that they had been previously growing there. But as soon as they put the Ozark chinkapins in, they went in the next day and like squirrels and mice and all sorts of mammals had like burrowed into the greenhouse and they just ate the Ozark chinkapins because I guess they're really high in protein. So it's a really important plant for wildlife, but it's a important food for probably native peoples too. too. I, I don't know a lot of the, the background of how native peoples used um, Ozark chinkapin chestnuts, but apparently they taste really sweet. They taste like almonds. Um, and you know, it's something that we probably should get back into our ecosystems because it's been lost, unfortunately. So the, the Ozark Chinkapin Foundation is doing some great work. Um, and in this video, um, I just received my package of seeds. So we're gonna open it up and take a look. Okay, so the first thing in the package is a little um, nutritional um, chart. Ozark Chinkapins are edible for people. They um, apparently taste really, really good. Very, almost like a sweet almond, according to the people who've, who've tried them. It's really hard to get a, your hands on them though because there is that blight uh, that affects not so much as bad as the American chestnut there, but um, it does affect the Ozark chinkapin. Um, and yeah, they are uh, quickly becoming endangered. Um, and so it's really great work that the foundation's doing. So as you can see, the protein, carbohydrate, fat, potassium, calcium, magnesium is all really, really high. Um, in most cases, much higher than all the others. But of course, that's only these three. I mean, I, I would love to see the comparison with um, you know other types of chestnuts and other native nuts, and pecans, and things like that. But apparently, the protein level is really, really high compared to almost any other nut. Um, parent trees of these seeds are from the largest known living trees that have been resist to have resistance to the chestnut blight. Important tips. I won't read it all right now, but you can pause the video and read if you're curious. So it looks like just generally, I'm oh, sorry about that, kind of windy out here. You want to make sure you protect them, um, but all the underlying things are the important, most important parts. So we're definitely going to read that in detail before um, I go ahead and plant them. Let's just take a look. I saw some people say that theirs have sprouted already, the ones they've gotten in the mail. And sure enough, I'm seeing some roots there. And apparently the, um, the Ozark chinkapin likes to... Um, sprout it's recommended to, to sprout and plant in the spring but they under the right conditions they will sprout in the um, fall and that's what like looks like what's happened here okay so here's what uh, one of them looks like some of the other ones in the bag have about an inch long taproot starting but I uh, just want to get a close up of the chink and chestnut pretty small about the size of a blueberry And starting to sprout. So I'm gonna put this one back inside. And it, I read in the the handout there, the printout, that the peat moss has some antifungal agents in there, which uh, is likely some sort of chemical. Which, if you're like me, you, you don't really like to have um, to use chemicals. But you know, when you're dealing with these genetics that are just so hard to come by. Um, and apparently they're very particular about moisture content. They can't be too moist or too dry. Um, you want to have the odds in your favor. So if you have to use a chemical for that to restore this species back to its 
form of glory, I think, uh, go for it. So um, I'm going to go ahead and end the video here. Um, and I'll be doing more videos on the Ozark chinkapin chestnut and how they grow throughout the year. We're going to try a bunch of different growing methods. If you want to stay up to date on that, uh, please hit the subscribe button and you will see some uh, updated videos when they come out. Thanks for watching.